I'm Aaron Graber with Ventrac, and you are watching the Lawn Care Life in Missouri. I'm here with Cameron. We're going to go to a, on a tour of this facility and check out everything we do here at Ventrac. What do you guys know about that? A road trip is not a road trip unless you go to Chick-fil-A. We don't have Chick-fil-A by us, so when we go out of town, we try to hit up a Chick-fil-A. Look at that. Fries coming out with the ketchup. I just get the uh, chicken deluxe, pepper jack cheese. Gotta make sure you get this honey roasted barbecue, man. That stuff's good. And the fries with sweet tea. Can't forget the sweet tea. It's like the best ever let's see oh yeah there it is hey guys what's going on cameron here with the lawn care life in missouri here at ventrac headquarters man i hope they're open today last time i came here i went out to the door and the door was locked and nobody would let me in they locked the door on me so i'm gonna try to get in here today and I know you guys have been watching the VIN track, you've been watching the Tough Cut, you've been watching all the work that I've been doing in Missouri. So thought I'd come to uh, Oroville, Ohio and check out Ventrac headquarters for you guys and just kind of show you guys around. I've never been here, so it's gonna be a whole lot of fun, but uh, show you guys what they have in here and uh, maybe learn more about Ventrac. I don't even know where I'm going, but hey, this door is unlocked. So, uh, go in here and see. Hey, this one's unlocked too. Well, it looks like they're open, but uh, I don't see anybody in here yet. How are you doing? Good. Can you see somebody? I was wondering if Aaron Graper still works here. Oh, yeah. You still work here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to see him here? Does he not know you're here? You're from? He, he does. I just sent him a message, so okay. he should be coming. But... Oh, there he is. He still works here. What's up? <laughs> What's up, dude? How's it going? It's going. How are you Am doing? I'm on camera right now. You're on camera. Yeah. Okay. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys are going to be open today. Yeah. Last finally, time I came, right. I pulled on the door and. Well, thanks for the warning this time. Yeah. yeah Come yeah. on in. <laughs> now here's the deal. I want to see. I want to see like behind the curtain stuff. Can we do that? No. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh man. Not okay. All right. Today. I was hoping, uh, you know, Andrew Dimbo, Dimbo Lawn and Landscape or Lawn and who? Uh, Dimbo Lawn and what's he call his? I don't even know. Sorry, Andrew, but <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get you some videos. Yeah. Um, we just added that last laser in a few months ago. Capacity uh, is the highest it's ever been for us, but these things basically run 24/7. Everything starts in this corner of the building. All of our raw steel comes in to the side of the building. Uh, 
split up into four different buildings here. We call them A, B, C, and D. We're in building A. Building A is where all of the laser and fab and weld takes place. From there, it moves to building B. That's where paint happens. Uh, building C is all of assembly and shipping. And then building D is our training facility. Okay. So we'll start here in A. This big garage door is where all the raw steel comes in. It gets put on these pallet racks. And this is all auto loading system. So once it's in each individual rack that it's, that it's uh, natural home is, the lasers that are programmed pull it off automatically. They run all the time, constantly. Uh, when we're not here over nights and weekends or whatever, our operators will be getting text messages for how the status looks on them. But it's all, once it's, once it's here in stage, we don't really process the metal by hand or anything. It's all done by the, the whole system. of our metal is local not just to the u.s but actually to ohio we're, at, we're in a pretty good spot here where uh, we have really good service from local metal suppliers that it doesn't come from really far away um, so that's nice it helps keep supply a little bit more stable but more importantly it's just it's good local quality steel that we don't have to worry about you know defects as much and things like that see a mill over there, a lathe right here. We don't do a lot of production, um, like production quantities in, in the areas like this. This is more for like one-off proto stuff or small batch builds for various parts that we don't consume a lot of, that it doesn't quite make sense to outsource, things like that. We have a little bit of, of uh, machine capability here for like little odds and end parts, but we don't really rely on this for like a high production level. These are lasers too, they're just older, older style lasers, they run a lot slower. Oh you wow. You can see them running here. Much slower. Oh, okay. Probably being generous. <laughs> All right. There was a time where these were our only two lasers. Oh, it was okay. a while ago. Yeah. But we've uh, we've gotten really big. Dude. It's almost incredible to think about how much progress we've made. Now, now you're talking about growing, like how, like what time frame were you talking? So when I came on board. I've been here for a little over seven years. You know, when I started, we weren't even in this first building. Oh, wow. So now we have four buildings here on this site. When I first started, we were in a facility across town. So I just like to show this because this is our latest manufacturing toy. Uh, we're getting into a few more of the, the full automated system. We have uh, robots that we've been using in well cells for a long time. You'll see those here in a second. But those are really like companion robots because you're, you're using the knowledge of the person that's standing next to them, loading the cells, prepping everything, making sure it's running correctly. This is really the first foray into full automation that we've got. And even still, we've got somebody babysitting it. Uh, he's here watching this thing run. But as you can see, he's not sitting in his computer like right now. He might be around the corner or something. So like, it's still going, it's still doing its thing. He might be within earshot, but... Um, it's pretty cool to see something like this be so capable. A little bit mesmerizing too. So what, what's it doing right now? So these parts are part of a batch build. It's, build, it's bending the same part on an electric brake press uh, for however many units it's got. It's probably doing 120 or 240 units or something like that. I don't know how many, what the number would be. It depends on the, on the part. Um, but it's just doing rep repetitive motion uh, and then when it switches to the next job um, I'm, I'm imagining that he's probably going in every separate time to, to retool the machine to help uh, change over. That's crazy. It is. The repeatability is nuts.
And really, it, it's mostly about quality. Yeah. I mean, it does, it does still lean on the setup, but as long as we've got everything set up properly, the repeatability of, of a machine that's programmed to do it is so much better than potential human error. After laser, so after you hit lasers, it all it all works on a, a batch system. Um, and if you go to any one of these carts, there's like a, uh, so this would be something that hasn't gone through fab yet. Um, I'm not sure if these get bent. I don't know what they are exactly. They look like maybe side plates for an aerator. So in that case, they probably wouldn't be. But if they were going to to break press. It's all got identification codes, so we track everything from the beginning of the process all the way through. Um, all of our production managers, they, they can log into the system anytime and see where this stuff is in the process. So everything that you see that's, that's on a pallet, kind of flat sheet stock that's been lasered out, waiting to have something done to it, whether it's cut, bent, welded, whatever it is, um, it's, all, it's all going to a place, going to a job. So this is all of our brake press area. We've got several hydraulic presses several electric presses, uh, a couple new presses for the different size things. We actually had to get a brand new press installed for the, the wide area mower, um, which you're familiar with. And it, it was too wide to run any of the rest of our brakes, so we had to get a whole new um, press installed. He knows his way around here. So from from <laughs> there, from there, all the stuff after it hits hits uh, fab goes over here to weld. And this is where weld starts. That's the first weld cell, and it goes all the way down to the end of this wall and this tunnel. And that stuff is he's uh, either getting it ready to go into a jig or okay. after it's come out of the jig finishing something up. And that's anything that we determine needs needs. needs Okay. Done by hand just for extra you know, care and how it's been, gotcha. uh, been behind him. He's got the robot doing most of the work in that cell. Okay. And then once it's done, we'll flip that table around. We'll load that gig, flip the table in, let it do that one while he unloads the next. So he's doing hitch arms right now. This is half of the hitch arm for a mower deck, like an MS deck. Um, this would nest into the other tube that goes over it. start telling you what things look like like I would have no idea what this shape is but as soon as you put it here it's like oh SSV V blade all day long um, SSV hitch arms here those are just a jig so that they know like that's that's kind of like mirroring the machine side so as they're building the parts they can reference that Really, after you buy the equipment, it's more important than than before you buy it. Right. You know, like once you finally decided to buy the equipment, that's when it really gets important. What what that manufacturer's like to work with. Yeah. So sure. This is. I don't know. I, I I appreciate it immensely for how well our parts is. Um, they just they get stuff out the door same day all the time. Support the network as, as best that, that it really needs to be. So people can actually use the stuff because you're going to break it like oh yeah i <laughs> broke a few parts you're, <laughs> you're going to break it you're a commercial user uh -huh. you know you're going to like it's just a matter of time until somebody finds a new way to break something right sure. uh, but anyway yeah so hard yeah. support support hard support when you go down you got to get that vent track back up and running right so uh here's all the parts just sitting here waiting yep we got Any? a whole team over there that's dedicated to this. Okay. The wall of hoses. Ooh, look at this, the, the wall of hoses. Of so, okay. Small parts, big parts, everything. So service department here, these guys are like all master technicians, a lot of product history with them. They understand the tractor better than anybody in the world. They exist in that room to answer some of the, some of the higher tech questions. 
Uh, you'll see full machines coming back for a periodic review from them. You'll see machines that are, maybe, maybe some of them come back from the field where there's like a phantom problem that nobody can figure out. They'll come back to these guys to diagnose. And they've got a lab in here that this is full of tools and usually a couple tractors that are in pieces um, trying to di run diagnostics and figure out what's going on. How long have you been working here, Scott? Nine years. Nine years. And no one in the world knows more about the tractor than you, right? Uh, dear me. <laughs> <laughs> he's good. He's good at it. So if my bin track goes down, I know where to bring it. Right. right over here, these guys will figure it out for sure. Yeah. 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 So more more service stuff over here. The famous studio. Um, Shout out to the marketing team because they do a really good job of getting it spruced up for like when we do something serious. So if you're watching the videos and I've heard like buzzers or beeping or oh yeah, something, uh -huh. sometimes you and you're hear, like oh, if you hear oh. beepers, it's because they're working over there in parts. <laughs> I'm watching your videos, live videos, or whatever, and then you hear some action in the background. Yeah, so you know okay. that this is know, the real deal. It's a real it's like, deal. It's not staged. It's we not are staged. we are right here in a production facility. What are all these created up here? A lot of these are tests attachments that service uses to so like these blowers uh -huh. one of the most demanding things you can do on a tractor to, to test power is to run a turbine blower at full speed because it, it consumes more power than any other attachment so a lot of times if they're trying to, to figure out like if, if something's overheating or they're chasing a, a electrical gremlin or something they'll put a blower on it and they'll just set it outside full speed and let it run um, and then some of these other attachments are the same thing it's like well we need to try and replicate something that, that is coming back from the field, some issue. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get an attachment on it that would presumably do that and see what see what, if we can make it do it. Okay. What in the world? I have no clue. What is that? Could be aerator. Seed, seed drop. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Got you. And you have one little part. Got some radiators up there. Weight transfer springs. Pretty hefty. Yeah, they are. SSV broom, 4520 broom. And what'd you say, this? These are cabs. These are cabs, yeah. yeah. So we actually, we're a little unique. We build our own cabs. Um, we do all the frame structure, design all that, um, put all the glass in, build the headliner, get that molded for ourselves. So it's completely our design. Everything, everything is, um, our own making. Cabs are they're a lot of work. There's a lot of there's a lot of weird parts that go into building a cab. Now I'm going to ask this question for Andrew. Are you going to uh, make a cab for guys who put on the bin track in the summertime? It's like 95, 100 degrees. It's nice and dusty out there on the tough cut or the power rate. Uh oh, he's hesitating a little bit. I think they can do it. We'll see. So we powder paint everything that we can, but some things that come pre-assembled with seals in them or rubber components that we still have to paint like transaxles. Uh, so those go through the wet paint process. That's for the corner of the building. And then over here is more parts waiting. Okay. Uh, powder. <laughs> This is a week's worth of, of mess. Oh, wow. Um, our powder system only runs four days a week because it's so expensive to start up. So you have to do a whole treatment process for the chemicals that wash the parts. 
uh, just the, the energy consumption of turning the ovens on and everything, you wanna do that as infrequently as possible. So they run this system four days a week. They are officially done for today and this week. So it looks like they're just doing cleanup. But you can still see the trolleys moving. They'll go through this whole system and then you'll see them come in, in through these doors and they'll be auto painted for most of them. So they'll have automatic sprayer guns. Mm -hmm. And we'll just have people on the back side of that cleaning up the parts that don't quite get hit. So weird corners, little intricate areas. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the system is automated. So now, any, do you have a way to? Uh, you have a, do you have a way to like capture the excess paint? Yeah, if you see the holes in the floor it. over there, uh -huh. um, it gets sucked in through there. Okay. And and we do uh, recycle as much paint as we can. And we have to do changeovers for each paint color too because we can't run the, like multiple paint colors at once because of that. Mm -hmm. So we'll do red for a while, we'll do black for a while, then we'll do tan for a while, and then we'll kind of rotate through those. those yeah. So at the DIE that year they had a, uh, a black one and then they had a camo one, is that right? And where did those go? I can't remember. So we auctioned those off and that was a, that was a charitable auction. So all the proceeds went to I can't remember which charity it was for okay, us. Okay, yeah. Um, so we basically just, it was a public auction through the dealers. Wow. So one of them, I'm not sure where the camo tractor went. The black one uh, just got purchased by a, a contractor in Ohio. I was like, hey, that's really cool. I want to buy it. Yeah, cool. So, that's where they load the parts and unload them. Um, all of our weights come in unpainted, so we paint those weights. You can see that stack there, so they're just finished. And then you can see that stack there, the spare metal. That'll get started up Monday morning with whatever color they're painting them, probably black. Um, but all of this whole trolley area is load on load area. Oh, okay. 4520 bracket to hold the muffler. You got a few of them. Got some hoods here. Oh, nice. Kind of like that color. Yeah. All right, drop a comment below if you guys want a hood on your uh, Ventrack 4520 like this. I think I would take one. What's in all these boxes over here? Transaxles. Ooh. So, yeah, these are all transaxles. Um, the four paint. We'll take these over. These will go through the wet paint area. Um, this whole area is just a quality inspection zone. So they'll, okay. when stuff gets gets unloaded here, they will uh, go through and check it over before it goes into any sort of production. You'll see other stuff here. Some, some of these things um, are coming from outside, like the ROPS, um, that's coming from a supplier that, that's like certified to build, build those things because they have to be tested for safety standards. Um, see some engines. Those are probably SSV engines. Yes. Yeah. All of these aisles is post, post paint. So this is all stuff that's getting ready for production. Everything over here is stuff that we're getting in. So parts that we don't make, tires, engines, certain hoses, drivetrain components, hydraulics, things like that. Um, it's getting staged here before it goes somewhere else. Okay. Five tough cuts at once. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I do. <laughs> this is where you buy one, get one free, right? Yeah, roll the whole cart out. <laughs> Now, what do we have right here? The KB Blades. Oh, okay. It's messed it together. I'm not in the snow game, so. Could be if you were a little further north. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we get one snow every three years. What's that? That's a roller for the wham. That is a roller. It is a roller. I guess that's why it tracks so good, huh? Yeah. So what do we have here? These are drums for the KJ broom. These are plates for the power reef. Snow blower, augers. Power rank, hitch arm, and tanks. This is the whole whole frame structure for the SSB. Cab finished out. These are all D902 Kubota diesel engines. <laughs> that would be nice. But that's almost better. We can take a walk down the assembly line, check it out. Everything starts, each tractor, everything starts just like this. So, transaxles on a cart, bolt them together, and then you build up from there. Even in, even in stage two, you start to see you know, motors going on, front frame going on, start to see some actual progress pretty quickly. Quite a, yeah, I was about to say quite a bit happening pretty quick. Yeah. Steering cylinder on, back half of the frame. Pumping motor. Front left cylinder. Getting your weight transfer stuff on now. Rear motor. to plumb the electrical stuff here. <whistles> Steering motor, drive levers, rear hydraulic cooler. Start to run all the rest of the lines and stuff around the center of the structure of the machine. So when they get to this stage, this is the end of the first first stretch of the assembly line. Uh, when they get to this stage, it's basically drivetrain and hydraulics. All the electrical stuff is kind of primed to start getting connected and everything. And when it makes this turn, it goes through and grabs an engine. So it looks like they're building Kubota gas tractors right now. 
This engine is, looks very similar to the Kubota diesel, um, but these are gas models. So as those tractors roll through this turn, they'll all get gas engines. Down here you can see an actual install of an engine. Everything underneath the engine bay should be pretty well wrapped up at this point. So they'll finish through by installing radiator, getting some of the hood structure in, side panels, all that stuff. And uh, only a few more steps till it's done. station where they'll start it up and run it, get all the fluids checked, start running things through. Um, every machine gets run on the assembly line before it goes out to check for pressure spikes, hydraulic leaks, anything that could potentially show up in the field. And they'll get the machine wheels on the ground and they'll actually drive it here in the warehouse. They'll go back and forth down there on that test track and they'll do that just to make sure that everything's functioning properly. Um, all of the cables are adjusted, everything needs to be in the right place. So how long will they actually start this up and run it? Uh, just a few minutes. Just a few just, minutes? Just long enough to let uh, fluid levels equalize, things like that. Get a sense for everything being connected. While it's running, they'll do a couple tests. Um, make sure you know battery voltage is, is fresh and electric is, is alternator output, things like that. final station you can see it's about done the front end's done uh, they'll throw a seat on it uh, ROPS actually goes in the crate with the tractor it's not installed with it because we like to keep the crates as small as possible so the ROPS is a dealer install um, but this a, a pretty finished out unit by the time the dealer sees it um, some compact tractors you'll see a lot longer process at the dealer they have to install you know maybe rear wheels and three-point hitches and things like that um, so it's, it's basically a totally finished unit by the time they get it. Just a couple little things to, to tack on at the end and ready for customers to see it. Where did you say they test them out down through here? Yeah, it's actually, I, I kind of wish you could see it because it's the more captivating piece of this. Most people that, that tour through stop here and, uh -huh. and really like, like to watch it. They basically go full tilt as hard as they can. Um, and it's not like to try and abuse anything because there's just never wood in that amount of time, but they just try to run it. Like it's one person that does that. So they have a really, like they do that so many times a day that if even one little thing is off, just in the feel of it, they, they would have, like, I could jump on the tractor and be like, it feels pretty good. And they would be like, mm, nope, it's a little bit off. And so, like, having that single person do that over and over and over again, every single day, every single tractor, full speed, forward reverse, they, ca they catch some little things sometimes where it's like, oh, it's a good thing that, that left the factory right, rather than waiting to find it out in the field. So. Cool. Yeah, like a wheelie bar. Yeah. Because <laughs> like a, a good concrete surface like this with all the traction uh -huh. in the world and and like going full speed like that they got to keep the back of the tractor or they got to keep the front of the tractor down so they got a wheelie bar that goes in the hitch because <laughs> wow. like he'll go he'll go full clip and then the front of the front of the machine will like want to lift off uh -huh. <laughs> so. but you can walk down here too see all 
I mean, this is all stuff that's incoming parts too, but here, uh, Kawasaki engines, more Kubotas. Kawasaki's there too, Kubota's at the end. It's got parts everywhere, waiting to go into machines. Workstations where a tractor came off the line because a part wasn't available, and it, you know, it just waiting for another couple weeks or something, and the only option is to build them incomplete right now. So occasionally that'll happen. We'll have units come off that are, that are a little bit incomplete, so we'll have a few parts that need to come in. Once they come in, we'll have those guys rework them. So you'll see some of that sitting here. Um, This is the SSV line. It's, it's much shorter. We can go down here to the start. It's just one stretch. So forward, oh, okay. front to back. It's also a simpler machine to build, I would say. There's probably just as many parts. So, you know, it, it takes, it takes a, the same amount of expertise, but um, there's not any articulation. You know, the frame is much, much simpler. Um, so they just don't, don't need quite as much space from, from start to finish to get it done. basic machine compared to the 4520 it's just this this whole frame is completely rigid um, box structure it's four-wheel drive wheel motors on each corner so each one of the wheels has a park wheel motor that it gets run by um, this is our newest unit so it's coming with the upgraded Vanguard engine 23 horsepower instead of the previous one was 18 ish Back here, hydraulic system, That's where your platform starts. Purely snow contractor focused. Guys that are doing hundreds of properties, um, miles and miles of sidewalks, that sort of thing. Very specialty machine. one's about done. Looks like a side panel, a couple graphics, you're ready to roll. Yeah, it looks like some of them are back from assembly to check part evaluations. Yeah, so this is the first of uh, attachment lines. From here to the end of the building, you'll see three or four lines running. These are all different attachments all the time. Uh, so we don't we don't build the same attachments everywhere all the time. We kind of do batch builds and change them over, just because we have so many attachments, we could never have enough lines to build them all. So um, right now they're building contour decks. You can see start off with basically just the deck shells. Um, so contour mower is our 84 inch cut, really really fine cut, um, low cut height. It's really popular on golf courses. Don't see it outside of that a lot some some municipal or school system a little bit here and there uh, but mostly a golf course mower very cool deck though maybe get myself one of those what's that half inch uh, oh yeah oh those are nice Just haven't made the leap yet. so they're building finished decks here it's a little bit weird to be building spring attachments in the winter, but that's generally like the, the broad trend is it kind of lines up that way. You're trying to be done with your bulk winter stuff in the summertime so, so that you can actually fulfill leading into winter season. So right now it's a mad rush to have enough stuff ready for spring. And it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of odd. Like we're not even really in winter yet and we're already thinking spring, but you have to, otherwise you'll get behind. So for you guys wanting those attachments, hey, they're trying to stay ahead. You know, they're trying to stay ahead of the game. We're doing our best. But it's tough when everybody's buying. Well, this is just a test mule that we built. It's got PTO, hydraulic flow, everything built into it. Uh, it has the ability to put an attachment on the hitch arms. You use the hoist to put it up there. But it lets you run the attachment, turn it around, work on it in different angles, that sort of thing. 
And this is product of Ventrac engineering on the on the manufacturing support side. So we do a lot of that stuff too. That you look all around the building. We're building like these trusses and all, all sorts of infrastructure support that we need to even just do these things. That is really neat. You were feeling these before? <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is an old, uh, we call it the 7200. This came and went before I was here. Uh, I've used it a few times. It was a pretty cool machine. I mean, it mows fast. It's a, it's a, it blitzes. I mean, it probably goes 15 miles an hour. What? Um, runs all the, all the Ventrac attachments, just like normal. Um, two wheel drive. Rear steer, so it's, it's maneuverable, like, really quickly. It's a weird little bugger. <laughs> back scratchers <laughs> yeah those are uh but we get those aerovator heads from the company that makes them they've got a patent on that technology and then we build it into our aerovator uh, so just pallets of those sitting waiting ready to go Cutting edges. Stuff is AR 400, I think. Some of it's 500, I believe, actually. But really expensive hardened steel. quality inspection areas. They'll go grab a random product at any time, just bring it over, tear through it, check every nut and bolt, make sure everything's dialed in. Um, sometimes they catch stuff, sometimes they don't. But it's another nice, we do that periodically through the process. So those earlier parts that you saw, when they first come in, they get inspected, um, it's a supplier part. And then, you know, stuff gets inspected from the time that it gets bent and welded all the way to assembly and then all the way through to the nearly the final product so you got a couple things here that are totally finished and uh they'll comb over it just make sure everything's perfectly suited Yeah, so this is like, we, we use this area as, um, Ben is in our kind of service training side, I guess. He's part of the training group at large, but more on the service side. Um, and we use this area to bring techs in that are new to the brand or a new dealer that gets signed on or recurring training or different levels of training, that sort of thing. Uh, give them a chance to come in, turn some wrenches, bug some tractors, figure out what kind of problems they got with them. Um, Looks like a lot of SSB stuff right now. Um, 4,500 stuff out on the pad. I figure we we'll go check out some attachments out there too. Here you got uh, two 4520s here. Uh, both of them got boom mowers. One of them's got the canopy, the fan. That's a pretty good alternative to a cab with AC. Uh, it's obviously not the same, not as good, but it's night and day difference over nothing at all. Really nice to run. Now, will that fan keep the dust and dirt off of you? It does. It does, does it really? It really does. Okay. So, so I used to it's have. Not perfect. I used to have a fan on my zero turn okay. mounted on top of me. Yeah. And so um, it would keep the dust off, yeah. you know, usually. Yeah. But I didn't know if this one would, since it has the cab up there, I didn't know if it would be yeah. similar or. 
it does a really good same. job of it. like it's not perfect. I think you know the lower half of you, your legs are still going to be exposed to a lot of dust. But at least it's but it is get out pulling your face. air from a much cleaner space that high up. Yeah, and it's it's keeping it away from your head, away from your face. It does a lot on a really hot summer day to yeah, to I'm keep sure. you more comfortable. This is a good little training circle. Get on stuff and uh, just try it out. Have all the different attachments out here. We try to keep a, a, a training fleet that has one of at least every attachment in it. So that when we do those trainings, when we bring dealers in, uh, sometimes we'll do customer events too, that there's at least, like if you want to try one specific thing, you could find it. Um, and so we have all the different engine options, different tractors, wheel, dual wheels, single wheels, all the different attachments, SSVs, anything you can find. And then over there we have a test hill that you can try. Uh, it's 25 degrees on one end and 30 degrees on the other. And it uh, gives you a really good feel for kind of what you're experiencing. So, trencher, wheel mowers here. Check that out if you want to. Unfortunately, I don't have any like tall grass to let you mow with it because hey. it's all mowed down. That's the hey, one problem with can, the facility we can try like the this. Corn. You try cornfield? Yeah, you can try it. <laughs> We've got both different versions there fine cut, fast cut. What are we going to put it on? The 4520 or the 4500? I don't care. We'll put it on the 4520. You can. Let's do it. You want to? Yeah. Okay. We'll check this out first. Okay. Um, you can give me the rest of the rundown out here. Stump grinder. This is the newest version. This thing's awesome. Turbine blower. That's the old model. So the new one's a little bit updated. Contour mower. This is the new primary seeder. This thing's pretty awesome. Seed in very large areas. Uh, this is attachment of choice. Edger. That's the updated blower. Ooh. Got the light kit on the top for extra visibility. <laughs> Air That's a 60-inch deck. That's got the hydraulic clip up on it, so oh, it operates nice. very similar to the Tough Cut, but you can see it just it mounts behind and in front of that pivot, and then you tension this. That's that mechanical lock that I was talking about. That flips up and okay. lets it work. When that's down, it, it's a hard stop that you can't accidentally actuate that flip up. Yeah, that's but nice. That's, you know, for, for maintenance too, it's kind of nice how easy that detention is. Like, boom, your belt's detentioned. You can actually work on stuff now. <laughs> yeah. So, try to build things as easy as possible for people to work on because you know it's going to happen. Ballpark groomer and renovator. This thing is sweet. That's what I need. This thing is sweet. You put it in a big yard. Yeah. Doing a big recon project or something. If you do any lawn installs at all or reconditions where it's like you're you're starting from scratch, whether it's a new yard or you're redoing one that's and it's not worth trying to save what's there, you're basically just skipping half of the job by using this. Because if you don't use this, you have to burn it all off, which is gonna take you twelve to twenty four hours to do. So you have to wait for that to happen. But even after the fact, you're gonna have to go in and power rake it up, get rid of a bunch of debris, all that stuff. Uh, or you could just go through it with this. As long as it's not like really dense, like thick root turf, which if it is, you're probably not replacing it. So if it's sparse or in weed, like infested already, you just go through this and turn it all in on itself in one pass and then you're done. And it's like, you just skip the whole first half of the job basically. But uh -huh. I'm seeing some things over here at Ventrac that obviously aren't on any of my attachments like Aaron just put these hoses in this little spot right here you see that mine does not have that and this 95 inch mower deck it looks a little wider than mine too so I don't know what's up with that <laughs> three seconds It's the hitch arm challenge with Aaron Graber. It's gonna do this in three seconds. 4.13. Ooh, that was pretty smooth.
Is that does this one have the fancy holes too? Yeah. Uh yeah, yep. Yeah, attachments that roll are always kind of a pain to hook up if you're you should come to my house where everything's unlevel. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing, nothing level at all at my house, and everything rolls and yeah. takes everything, you. Everything's underwater too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Down at my our shop down there, for sure. All right, what height you want to cut at? I don't know. What do you recommend? <laughs> for corn stalks? Well, <laughs> usually when I mow corn stalks. <laughs> oh, is that what we're doing? We're gonna really mow them. I mean, why not? Okay. You're gonna you're gonna dip into the corner of them. If yeah. you try to mow that grass right there, you're gonna hit a few. Okay. Uh, this is how you mow corn stalks. I, I don't know. In Ventrac guess, country, you probably want to be somewhere around six like inches, two inches, two inches. Yeah. I'm gonna hit some corn out there. Okay. It'll so be fun. the thing with a flail, what you'll find is that since there's no lift or very very little, this is the fast cut deck, so it has Y blades. So that's what no, I want. There's Fast no cut. lift. Yeah. yeah. Um, if, I, if I know how to run this thing, it's got the foot deal down here. That's new. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is nice. <laughs> this is, yeah, this seat is nice. I see. Okay. Anything I need to know about it? Besides run, everything is different. Runs the same, it runs the same as yours. Only thing is the PTO is in a different spot. Okay. So I'd probably give it a little bit of weight transfer for the. Yeah. Well, you want me to put it on two or three? Mm, probably three. Three. Yeah, it's a bit of a heavy deck. Okay. And uh, everything else is run it like you know. Okay, sounds good.
this is the fast cut model. Now you can see exposed, these are the Y knives. So nice thing about the Y knives is they can be turned around. You see a sharpened edge in the front and back. So you get kind of two X life out of this setup. Um, you just flip these around and, and run them the other direction. Uh, the other knives are a single piece and they have a flat bottom. So they're, they're really more focused for cutting turf grass that's either gotten out of hand or that you cut less frequently. These will go into a little bit more variety and they'll carry a little bit better speed. That's why we call them fine cut versus fast cut versus, instead of calling it like fine cut versus rough cut, um, we call this one the fast cut because it'll carry a little bit better speed once the drum is full of material. So you get into stuff like this where it's just full of, of stuff. Um, these are processing a little bit less air than the fine cut blades. They're also processing the material fewer times. So if you took the fine cut through this stuff, it would actually look even better than that. It would just take longer. And the, the concept of a flail though is really cool for, for various reasons. You know, the tough cut's great if you want to cruise through things and just knock stuff down. But the fact that you have so many blades with overlapping knives on a flail and, and the fact that it, it runs in the direction that it does, it picks up material and then it keeps it up in the deck for a little bit of time. So every, every little bit of material gets processed a little bit more. So it shreds it into finer pieces. It's much harder for anything that's growing to escape these blades. So as you drive over it, you're, you're much less likely to leave skippers and things that stand back up after you're done doing the job. Um, and then there's other benefits too of running the flail um, because these knives, whether it's this, this type or the version, the other version, when they hit something that's a little bit, um, a little bit raised, like if you hit a rock or a dirt clod or something that, that you don't really want to cut, these knives very easily bend backwards and absorb a lot of that energy. Uh, but more importantly, it keeps um, the blades from, from suffering so much damage when you hit something hard like that. Um, you can take this and flip it up and replace single, single knives if you have to. So you don't have to go through and, and replace all of them all at once. If you have an instant like that where something breaks it, you can go in and just replace three or four knives and call it a day. So the advantage of our flail over a lot of them in the market is the quick change of height. Most of the time the height change will be like it is on our tough cut uh, with a combination of pins or bolts in the back and pins or bolts in the front. And so you have to like go to all four corners of the deck and change that cut height accordingly. And usually you have to get tools out to do it. We have a carrier frame built in. So you just roll this back, slide it in, and then use this lever to change just like you would on an MS finish deck. And you do that on both sides and you can change the cut height in a minute or so. Super nice, no tools involved. Um, just one of the advantages of having it laid out this way.
All right, so we're here at Ventrac headquarters, and we got Aaron Grieber back here. He just showed me the whole place, man, the inside, outside. Tried out some equipment, tried out some attachments, and uh, had a whole lot of fun. Just want to thank you, man, for showing me around and uh, showing me Ventrac headquarters. Because the last time, last time I showed up, <laughs> I walked up there, the door was locked. They locked me out. This time they let me in, and Aaron showed me around. So uh, I appreciate it a lot, man. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for watching Cameron's channel. If you got any questions about this, um, be sure to drop them in the comments. He can answer them, or maybe I'll pop in too. Uh, but if not, he can text me and let me know. Um, thanks for checking out Ventrac. If you got any questions about our equipment, you can check out our website too. Be sure to follow us on social. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's it's a great time to, to be here at Ventrac and always run some equipment. It's always a, a good time to, to see everybody that, uh, that runs our stuff and, and comes through. If you have any interest in a tour too, it's not totally uncommon. As long as you give us a little bit of a heads up, we can get you through here, uh, check out what we're, what we're doing here and see how Ventrax are made. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.